What is going on guys? Welcome to the New 50 New, and I am here at Big City Comics as always. Uh, with me as always is Mark. Say hi Mark. Hi Mark. Um, today I'm going to show you my books and just have a general chit chat with Mark I think as usual. And uh, my part time cameraman Tony is also here so he might chime in with his two cents every now and then too. So, let's do this. Yes. Alright guys, um, I'm going to show you my books for the week. Uh, first is, following the viral Batman 89, I picked up Batman issue 90. What, what do you mean picked up? You're, it's on your... It is on my pull list. It's on so, your pull list. That's right. So, um, what are you talking about? Have a look at me. Is there any... You're not one of those... You're not one of those... Jumping on people. No, 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 not at all. Just seeing if there's any punchline in here, and I can't see any, but there's a very, very nice picture of Harley Quinn there. Looking all game it up playing a PlayStation. That's, that's spoiler. spoiler alert. Oh, sorry. Whoops. Sorry. Anyway, um, so that's Batman issue 90. Oh, the designer. Oh, did you guys see the designer in issue 89? Probably not, because you didn't get it all. You got it, and you couldn't see him anyway. He's, 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 got, a, <laughs> he's got a D on yeah, his he's face. Not. He's got a D on his face. Look at that. The designer, he got a D on his face. Got a face. <laughs> anyway. That is my books for the week. Just one book that is amazing for my wallet, which means I'm just gonna end up just buying some stuff. Actually, you know what? I might pick up a I might pick up a Flash 750. Maybe I'll go through some covers. Ooh, no, De Delotto. That's Delotto. Gabriel Delotto. I'm gonna go with this cover for Flash 750. Since I'm only picking up one book, I may as well pick up another one, right? What else have I got to do with my money? Anyway, that's my book. So um, I just want to obviously have a chat with Mark as I usually like to do about a certain topic, a bit of a continuation from what we chatted about in the video that I've probably released by now where we chatted about the Dio leaving and the future of DC and we've done previous videos about the 5G initiative. So something I've heard a lot, Mark, recently, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts and you know, doing a lot of reading and there's this rumor going around and I just want to get your two cents on what the likeliness of this happening is. Um, that they're saying if the 5G thing does not sell well or doesn't do well, that they might completely shut down DC Publishing. That is the rumor, 100%. Wait, like, I've, I've, heard, I've, I've heard that as well. <laughs> red is the color of the day, by the way, guys. Look how much red's going on there. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Look, that's the rumor they're gonna completely shut down. I mean, that would be a shame, but. But do you think that's a. Like, they're just talking about the comic book side of it. They wouldn't even Correct. just go digital? Maybe. Off, I mean, it's 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 owned by AT&T, man. Like, can you, yeah, are you wondering why it's called 5G? Yeah, no, that's what I was saying. Like, yeah, so, it, makes, it makes sense. And, and it makes sense that they do go digital. For them. But not for us who love the paper. Not us as a, as a comic book retailer. You know, what am I going to sell? A, a digital app. I mean, that they, well, they've lost their sales there. They'll cut us out, which is the middleman out right out of the picture and if that's how they want to go that's fine but at the end of the day it'll just raise all the vintage stuff that is on paper a lot more higher well, that, that's what you know but i'd rather that not happen than um than it, i agree i uh, agree what else am i going to collect no not only that um you know i mean that's i mean that's the reason why you know marvel started off with the facsimiles because they were not getting they're not getting any return from all the vintage stuff that's really a big craze at the moment. So they're not getting any return of that. They're not getting a return on, you know, uh, a $20,000 book being sold. How are they getting a return? So they release a facsimile and they'll get some sort of return out of it. It's a clever, I, mean, I love the facsimiles. They're awesome, you know, they're, they're, you know, amazing fantasy when that came out. Looked at that artwork and I said, I would never see this in my lifetime. But the thing is, you see that artwork everywhere. You know, like uh, in, in docos, you know, always the original, where that originality of, of that art of where Spider-Man came from, that comic book. And so to hold it in my hands and, and read it and see the artwork was amazing. So, you know, I, 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 cut their hand, I cut my hands to Marvel for that smart, clever, you know, in, in, in innovation. But at the end of the day, you know, that, that should also prove to the companies of how popular the print is. Well, I guess what, 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 what I was going to lead on to was because I know I think in the 90s there was trouble with the whole comic book industry like has there been another time in history where comic books were close to you know they're always th throughout the whole 80s and 90s they're always on the brink 100% when was the comic book industry's rock star era you know I mean, surely it was the 80s it was the, the 80s early it was, 90s it was that 10 year span mid mid 80s to mid 90s that 10 year span was 
it was the it was the golden I find it the heyday of comics 100 percent and I've always said it and I'll always say it we got so many good stories in that era because uh, the, the, they were struggling the, co the comics so they, they gave full control to the to the creators or to the artists you know the writers and the and, and the artists so you know out of the out of that 10 year period we got the death of Superman we got the breaking of the bat I'll keep saying it over we got we got venom we got you know then we got artists like um, you know McFarlane Jim Lee and even though they've been around but it just it, it gave them more they gave them more freedom to do you know uh, I mean McFarlane changed the way Spider-Man looked you know forever you know so that's that's his big eyes, eyes the, even the way he swung the webbing McFarlane changed everything for Spider-Man so that's what we got out of the 90s, things like that. But these days, you know, people are, it's, a, it's an age of, you know, rebooting, you know, like always constantly improving the, the brand or changing the brand to keep it more interesting and keep it more viable in, in today's market. They can't leave it be. Marvel now are, are on a street where they just, they're leaving it as it is. You know, um, they're just, um, they're going well, I suppose, but whereas DC, it's like every 10 years or every five years, they want to re reboot or rehash. I don't know where that comes from. I don't know who, you know, I mean, we'll see now what happens now that Dan Dio has left. We'll see what happens with that brand. I mean, it's it's hard It's hard to obviously commentate from from this level because we, we don't know. Yeah, well. well, and like obviously the movies, obviously Marvel's a lot more in the... But they've like got more hands-on with their customers now than they did back Who's in that? The Marvel. The Marvel and DC, because now they have social media, they've got Twitter, they've got Instagram, they, they can see the trends that are shifting. Oh, 100%. People, of course they, they can. The yeah, oh, 100%. Oh, and you know, uh, DC tend to tend to sway with the, with the fans a lot more than what Marvel do. Marvel will just go off and... They know what fans want already because they because they've got proven success in, in all their fields, you know. Um, so whereas DC, um, uh, they cop a lot of flack for a lot of things, the decisions they do, and oh, no one knows wh why they do it, you know. And you know, at, at, at the end of the day, unfortunately, it all comes down to the dollar because it's a business. Yeah, you know? are they are they making enough money? Uh, you know, they being owned by a, a phone company. They don't really care about the character. They might care a little bit because it's going to drive their sales. You know, putting good writers, good artists. Of course, that's going to drive their sales. But at the end of the day, it is 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 what they're paying the artists viable enough to make enough money with the character. You know, that's why there's a you know last I say ten or fifteen years a massive push on Batman. You know, since New Fifty Two. You know, huge push on Batman, they're putting good writers, you know, whereas the other, it, it comes to a point where, you know, where the other characters are left to, you know, swing in the wind, you know, um, only now that Superman's really, really getting a great, who's got a great writer, who's really getting good stories. A lot of people don't like Bendis' Superman. <laughs> See, but I, I, I think I like it because I, I look at it and it goes straight out of the, the Superman from the 90s, which I, which is, it was a great run. The storylines from the 90s or from the 80s, you know, in that 10 year period were awesome. They were what led into the death of Superman. It's, you know, we got the Cyborg Superman, we got the Eradicator, all those were all set up all way before Superman's death. I think Bendis, like most writers, most great, want to create their own universe, yeah. their own circular key, I suppose. Yeah. You know, Coates is doing it as well. Yeah. Uh, hey, Billy G. Hey, Billy, come <laughs> say hello. We'll put a little pumpkin on your head, man. Came early. Yeah, that's all right. So yeah, I hate I hate being an armchair an armchair critic, but it's hard not to be when you're in this industry, I suppose. I guess the last thing was what I've heard is that DC would potentially maybe license out their characters. Who knows? That, that is a, of course, that's a big rumor, and you know, big rumors that Marvel wants to take over or Disney. I mean, if that's the case, I mean, I know. I mean, from past experience, not that I know, but from ex from past. From looking at it from the past, Marvel, I think, don't want a partial character. They're not gonna get the characters just for the comics. I think they would want everything. You know, comics and the movies. Do you think it would be a big deal? Like, I mean, obviously there've been rumors that they're gonna cross over at the moment and things like that. I think if, I think if they, if they, if, if Disney owned everything, which is fine, but. Like, imagine that they, world. They, they need to keep it separate. They still need yeah. to keep DC Universe and Marvel Universe. I think they have, I think they have Superman and Thor, for an example, or Superman and Spider-Man in the same universe. 
with just too many heroes on one on one world. That would be, I mean, and, and yeah, have a crossover from time to time. That would be awesome. But to have to have a Marvel with DC or have the same characters on the one world, there's not enough. There's the the it 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 it, 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 it my my so I'm gonna start bleeding from my ears, you know, and it, it's just my head's going about to explode. It's to think about it. Too much. Too much. Really? Yep. Absolutely too much. One thing that I love about things like this that happen in the industry is that it gets people talking about comics and that's always good. For years, comics are always in the background. No one really, you know, it was a niche. It was, you know, an alternate form of entertainment. Now it's part of pop culture, which, I, which I've always wanted it to be because it's, it's a great medium. So I'm glad that we are talking about it, good or bad. Does that make sense? It does make sense. I love it. Yeah. Well, you've, got, you've, you've got a haircut. I did get a haircut, mate. And you, you recolored your hair? I did. Look at this guy. That's why I wore the red today, mate, to, uh, <laughs> to, to make he just, not, he just knocked off 20 years off his loft. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And mate, if I ever dye my hair back to just black, I'll add 40 years to my life. <laughs> I'm telling you, mate, it's keeping me young. Well, we all, he might be uh, just colouring all the grey hairs. We really don't know how old No, I've been telling you, eventually it'll be half red, half grey, mate. Ooh. Yeah. It'll be when I'm more sophisticated and sexy and old. The day, did those words come together? No. Are you, are you saying I'm old you're, and sexy You are, mate, you are. In that last video, mate, we did, you were very sexy in that t-shirt. Oh, um, that video is not coming to light. No, it's, oh. already, it's already out there. I think by the, time come, by the time this comes out, it'll be out there. Get out! Um, any other two cents? Tony, anything to add? No, I'm all good. No? Billy? Nothing to add. Nothing to add from Billy G. Well, um, I think that's enough for today. Anything else coming out in the next week or the rest of the month? It's oh, the beginning. Off the top of my head, I can't tell you, man. I'm not prepared. No, I'm, not prepared. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm busy. I'm in the middle of going through my order for Wednesday, and as always, comes in surprises me with the camera in my face. Yeah. You see what I have to put up with here, yeah. huh? But it looks after. I, I have one thing to say. Yeah. Keep it simple. What he said. Ooh. <laughs> That's real. That's legit. <laughs>